Hello, everybody. I am super excited to. Hello, everybody. I am super excited to be sharing this very long overdue part of my Sensi journey with you guys. I'm going to be talking about how to build a six figure income. Um, with Cincy. And I think this is very important because we don't talk about money enough. And I wanted to make sure that I had a video that could be recorded and on YouTube um, for years to come so people can see what my journeys looked like, activities that I've done so you can take them and do it your way. Um, but again, I don't think that money is talked about enough. And, you know, money is something <clears throat> especially for leaders um, that could be critical to making or breaking you staying with Cincy and, and that kind of thing. And so um, my name is Chloe and I have been a consultant since November 2012. So it was just 10 years this past November, November 9th to be exact. And I'm going to kind of walk you guys through Really the activities, well, the activities, because that's that's how you build a business is through your discipline and through your activities, but what activities I did then and what activities that I do now and what has changed, um, which is inevitable. And in a business, you should expect change and embrace change. Um, and then I'm gonna share with you guys things that I wish I knew then. Um, because I've been doing this a really, really long time, and there's been so many incredible influences from Cincy Consultants, but there's also been ones that I took on or adapted to that were incredibly unbeneficial to my business. And so I think that's going to be key as you guys listen to what I've done, what I focused on, how I specifically focused on building leaders, um, those core values and those core concepts. And um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So, joined November 9th, 2012, and I had just turned 22. So, my husband and I had just gotten married that same year in October, the month before. Um, and I had just started my job as a nurse. So, I um, was a floor nurse. I worked at a hospital. I did that five and a half years. So, the entire first, you know, five and a half years of my business, not only did I have a full-time job, but there were a lot of other things in between, which I'm going to talk about. Um, because there are elements you have to make decisions in for your business and you have to decide what, what the sacrifice is going to be so you can make that game plan and work that game plan so you can get there. Um, a dream is just a dream. You have to put your feet to the pavement on it. And we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, so where, where was I at this time? Like I said, I was a new nurse. I had just gotten married the month, uh, before I joined. Um, I had no direct sales experience at all. None. Um, no marketing experience, no leadership experience. Um, aside from a leadership course that I took in nursing school, but aside from that, this was way out of my element as far as knowledge went, which I think is really important to know because when you embrace learning and you embrace um, difficulty and failure and change, and you learn to take that as a catalyst to do it better the next time and to to really take that as the failure is, is that next step to getting you to that target in your business or in your life, it can really be a game changer. And so um, the first three months of my business, I didn't sponsor anybody. Um, I was really trying to, but again, I had never done this before. So I was very down on myself. And this is important because people have to understand what it takes to actually sponsor, okay? So I was having conversations every day for three months straight when I first started my business. And I actually remember wanting to quit um, because I was like, this is so much, you know, I have been having all these conversations. Nobody wants to join. Little did I know, you know, now I know it takes a lot of time and a lot of repetition 
and a lot of consistency in order to sponsor because sponsoring is something you do as a lifestyle. Sponsoring is not something you do to earn a pretty sensi bag or to earn an incentive. Sponsoring, when you are a like true heart, I'm in it leader, sponsoring is just who you are. And I didn't know that then. So guess what? I wanted to quit, but I didn't. And then February of 2013, I got my first frontline. Um, right away, I'm going to tell you guys some activities that I was doing. Nobody had to tell me to do team meetings. Nobody had to tell them to show them, tell, tell me to show them the way. I knew immediately that if I wanted to help these people get to the next level, that I had to loop them in and build a community with them, share what I was doing, ask what they were doing. So I immediately, and I mean immediately, the month of February did a team call. It was with free conference calling. Y'all don't know nothing about free conference call because now we have Zoom and all these other things. But I did free conference call and just went over what was going on that month. And it was very, it was very simple, but also it got me into the rhythm of why it's important to be consistent with your team members and why it's important to show up, not in a way to where you're gonna sacrifice every single waking hour. That's called you need boundaries and business hours, which we will talk about in the what I wish I knew then now. But showing up for your team is critical. And so I immediately was showing up for my team. I was immediately doing sample nights. I was immediately doing, um, there wasn't a lot of Zoom stuff and recording stuff like this. A lot of it was in person. And a lot of people like to say, well, we're in a digital world. People don't do that. You can do whatever you wanna do in your business. If you wanna have sample nights to get your team together, you can do that and it's gonna build community. If you wanna do paint nights or bowling or go out to dinner or do any of those things, it's going to build community and it's going to be intentional. And so, um, you know, just like how people say parties aren't dead, well, also building community and connection with your team is not dead. Um, you can only go so far with social media. So I didn't build my business with social media at all. Um, I want to make sure that that is very clear. Um, and so um, as I was uh, working towards my first incentive, it was... 2013 so you yeah, got my first full year um i went to sfr and my first one drove all the way to indianapolis had no idea what i was doing but i wanted to go to an event and so i went to the event and everything changed this is why it is critical critical that you go to events if you want to be a leader in sensi if you want to take it seriously as a business in Cincy, that first event changed my entire perception on what I thought life could be. I never thought that life could look different for me than where my life was at. Hang on, let me pull my chair up. There we go. Not in a bad way, but I just thought my family is in the medical field. I had a really, really rough childhood, so I had already been under a significant amount of trauma and stress, and so I thought, I'm just going to be here as a nurse because I've worked so hard. So my mindset was no growth mindset before I went to my first event. I did not think that I could ever earn an incentive. I thought those were weird. I thought people that earned incentives in direct sales company, it was like, sorry, respectfully, like the Mary Kay car, like that was not the vibe for me. But when I went to my first event, it was just very, very different. Um, and it had nothing to do with anybody special talking to me or meeting anybody. It was a decision I made. And I think that's important for you to understand. You have to stop waiting for someone else in Cincy to validate you to get to that next level of your life because it's your life. Nobody made that decision to go to SFR but me. I drove there with my husband, drove there, okay? Um, like ate sandwiches, like we were broke living on credit cards. And so I come back and I earn a top 100 trip to Greece. Never in a million years thought I could do that. My husband had never been outside of the country aside from when we went to Mexico for our honeymoon. And so I earned it. And I also got pregnant that December with my son. He's now eight, his name is Brody. And I went to Greece in 2014, pregnant, 27 weeks pregnant, went to Greece. Um, it was a top 100 trip. And when I 
when I earned that, and it's not always about a goal for everybody, but for me, and this is important to understand, because I, because I vocalized it and I said, I'm going to earn this trip, and I put my feet to the pavement and I continued to do the two by two by two, 2,000 a month, sponsor two a month, continue to do it for two years. That's just something I've continued my whole career. But two by two by two was a lifestyle for me from the second I recruited the first person till today. We live in a culture where we think that we don't have to work to succeed. And the reality, especially in Cincy, is that you cannot work in Cincy. That's fine. You cannot build leaders. You can kind of do, kind of front load parties and not do it other months. But the longer that you do that, the longer you're going to drift away from disciplined actions that are going to get you to a six-figure income. Six-figure incomes in direct sales do not happen accidentally. They're actually very, very intentionally. And I can bet that there's only a small percentage of consultants in every direct sale company that makes a six-figure income, which is another reason why I wanna do this video because I want you guys to understand what it takes. And this video won't be for everybody, but it's gonna be for the people that wanna change their life and make a six-figure income and see that it's possible. I want you guys to understand I have no background in, in sales and marketing and anything that I stated previously. And I also learned by error by trial and by error, okay? Again, your sense, that's all you need, okay? So you don't need all these fancy things and all these, we're very distracted by social media, but what you need to do is bring the sense to work. Tell people they can get free Sensi. There are hundreds and thousands of trainings on this, but um, you know, also in my first five and a half years, every day I was watching some kind of training or learning something new seeing what seeing seeing new tips on how to have verbiage for to get party bookings seeing party booking games um hostess coaching stuff i wasn't looking on facebook pages to steal someone's canva image i was the canva image and y'all need to understand that you are your business card your face is your business card your testers are your employees all that other stuff it's cute it looks good i love marketing now i love it but that's not what's built my business. What built my business and what builds businesses and what continues to build my business is sponsoring to a month, 2000, 2000 in sales a month indefinitely for me. So um, a couple things that definitely were huge in my last 10 years and that were always, um, were always like the groundwork of me being as sane as I could be. Um, but what really helped me the most was I had a really strong grounded faith. So I'm a believer and um, I just really, I mean, my team name is based out of Hebrews 619. Um, I believe that God has given me this business. It's my um, it's up to me to steward it and to learn and to grow and to do all those things. So I've always been very grounded in that because without him, I would have left a long time ago. Um, and discipline over motivation. Motivation is the biggest lie somebody will tell you. Do not listen to anybody who tells you that in order to be successful, you need to be motivated because I am telling you right now, there have been 10 times the amount of days when I was not motivated, but I was disciplined. I knew what I wanted to get you know, out of this business and where I wanted my life to be. I could see it, I could visualize it. So no feeling or no um, bad sale or no, uh, no like flopped party or someone who joined and didn't do anything. Those didn't matter to me and still don't matter to me because I'm always focused on what's ahead. I'm always looking out of the windshield. I'm not looking in the rear view mirror. So um, I think that's really, really important because discipline is gonna get you to do those really big, scary, fundamental things in repetition. And it doesn't mean you're not gonna be scared. I still get very, very nervous whenever I'm training somebody that I don't know. I get nervous when I do home parties. I get, I get nervous with new customers. But um, nerves are not always a bad thing, okay? Getting uncomfortable is really important. And then the last thing that I really 
have always focused on in my business is letting my business tell me what to do, okay? What does that mean? So that means whenever I go to work and do what I need to do for my business, I'm looking at sales, sponsoring, and leadership. Those three tiers, okay? So if I'm looking at PRV, and I would see it's mid-month right now, for me, my personal goal now is always 4,000 a month. So for me, I'm looking at today, 16th, and I'm like, okay, am I at 2,000? Because that's where I wanna be this month. Okay, let's move over to sponsoring now. I said my goal was two this month. I just got two as of yesterday, but I need to see where they're at with their business. Do they wanna do launch parties? How can I help them succeed? Are they gonna be kinda in, kinda out? Where are they gonna be as consultants? And number three, where is leadership? Who am I looking at? Who am I working with? Leadership comes from PRV and sponsoring. You're not going to have the leaders to build if you're not selling and you're not recruiting. And I think this is key because so many people get focused on their team of 13 people. And listen, my first year until I went to SFR, I was a star consultant and I had 13 people, literally. And I would focus so much on them and so much on them. But then I went to reunion and I was like, dude, I need to build me's. I need to build people like me. I need to teach people how to sponsor like me. So the conversation was different. The conversation with those team members was not just, hey, here's how you can sell this month. Here's a little challenge we're doing with our team. It was, hey, I believe in you and I see something in you. I can help you get there. Let's talk about sponsoring if you wanna do that and I'll tell you what I do. Now, I'm gonna talk about at the end of this training some um, different things that I am gonna implement now after 10 years in leadership because I've done a lot and I've learned a lot. Um, but it comes down to your PRV, your sponsoring and your leadership. It's that simple. We are overcomplicating it and if you're saying you don't have customers, you don't have parties and you're not getting out and meeting people. You're not gonna be able to just build a massive, huge business by not having conversations with people. It's not going to happen. And by not having conversations with your team and by not going out ahead of them and doing the things that you're asking them to do, being a real authentic leader who works really, 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 really hard, okay? And so 2012 to 2016, like I said, social media wasn't a thing, okay? Um, and so I was very focused on home parties. A lot, I did a lot of home parties. They were always themed, okay? I switched now more to bag parties and I'm also gonna get into um, more events as well. But um, my main bread and butter, where I found a lot of customers was home parties and then also I took bag parties to work. Um, my goal was six to eight a month parties, period, um, because I wanted to recruit some of those people. So a lot of these things that I'm saying now, they're not much different today. If you implemented six, six to eight parties a month, 2,000 PRV a month, two, um, two recruits a month, and you focused on leadership and building a community and having consistent trainings and connection points and sample nights and one-on-ones and helping people understand the compensation plan, you're going to build a wealthy business, but you have to do it consistently not just on the third Friday of the month because you feel like it. That's not how wealth is built. It's not built off of feelings. I can tell you that right now. If wealth in this business was built off of feelings, I would have left the first time somebody made me cry. And y'all need to understand that because you will get upset in this business. Things will happen, you know why? because most of you have never done this before, but that's where you have to grow your discipline muscle and you get on YouTube and you train yourself in areas of weakness that you are going to get strong in. I have always been in my business disciplined to the sense of, if I see someone is doing something and it's really working for them, and if I, if I have weighed out my options and I'm like, I think I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do that because nothing changes if nothing changes. And change also has to happen as, as time evolves and as the years change. So things that worked for me before, because now I've been home for four years now, five years now, it's not gonna work the same now. But the core is meeting people, sponsoring and selling and having a goal for that. My goals are always written down every single month, every single month. That's discipline. 
I know what I'm gonna do every day. That's discipline. My business tells me what to do. I do certain things on days of the week. You don't have to do that, but if you were scattered in your business, I highly recommend you get a focus point because if you're not 100% focusing on PRV and then 100% focusing on sponsoring and then 100% focusing on leadership, you're gonna struggle. You can't do all three of those things at one time. You have to break it up, all right? So um, I also built my business on a lot of one-on-one -on -one sniff sessions. Um, I would do order drop-offs and meet for coffee. I mean, it's a grind. I'm gonna be really honest. You have to stop being a soft consultant and a soft leader and you have to get to work. That is how you build a business, is by working when the doors are closed making a sacrifice there were two and a half years where i would go home put my son to bed if he wasn't already in bed kiss my husband and go upstairs and work and do what i needed to do i would wake up early i was working 13 hour shifts i'd wake up early and i'd get bag parties ready to give to people at work i would run bag parties to people on my lunch break I would pick them up on my lunch break. By lunch break, I mean 12 minutes you got to eat when you were a floor nurse, and that also includes peeing. And not once, and even now, I don't complain. So you have to also stop complaining and make a decision that if you don't like where your sales are, nobody's gonna change that but you, sis. If you don't like the fact that you're not recruiting, Sadly, like quit crying about it and learn a different way to do it. Grow your network. How many home parties have you had? How many events are you in? How are you meeting anybody new? How are you meeting anybody new? You cannot expect to sponsor and you cannot expect to have sales without meeting new people every month. And by new, I don't mean two new people a month. I mean 15 to 20 new people a month by really getting yourself out there and home parties, bag parties, those events, that's how you're gonna meet people. So I left nursing in 2018. And um, before I left nursing though, I promoted to SSD in 2015. So three years later, I promoted. I double promoted, I went from star director in October to SSD in November. So I promoted to SSD the same, the same month that I had joined in, in November. Um, and I was still a nurse. I didn't leave till 2018, so I'm working my business as an SSD. But this is where it changed for me with leadership. And this is where this is where I began to see how to really build wealth and what that looked like. Because it's not you're not you're not going to build wealth. And I will die on this hill in direct sales. You're not going to build wealth by just having great sales. You're not. And I know that because I see the breakdown of my paycheck. You're not going to grow wealth by just recruiting people and putting them on a team page. You've got to lead them to water. You've got to give them the tools, encourage them, show them the possibilities. And so when I promoted that I was not paid at title that first year, and it is because I am, I'm going to go ahead and say this, I am a recovering people pleaser. I am a recovering yes girl. I used to say yes to everything. I used to people please all the time, feel bad all the time. Very, very, very bad trait to have when you're a leader, right? But I wanted everybody to be happy and I wanted this and I wanted that. Not sustainable, not duplicatable, kept doing it. Um, but I wasn't paid at title the first year. You know why? Because I was just focused on the four directors that I had to get to SSD and trying to save them to get them to get paid at title. Mind you, only one of those four directors is still in Cincy today under me. Her name's Heather Bullock. She's the only one that stayed. The other three that I was trying to save, that time was wasted trying to save them when I could have been building new lead stars and superstars. So after that first year in 2016, I was like, I am not doing this. I am not saving these grown women I am not going to keep listening to their problems respectfully because I'm not. This is not an emotion business. I have learned that very clearly over the past year. You must take emotions out. You don't need to be friends with these people. You're here to be a mentor. You're here to give them the tools. You're here to show up. You're here to work hard. That's it. Okay. So 
I was like, okay, I think I need to start talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Hence, coaching calls were born. They used to be called AIM, if any of you have been here for a long time. First started the program and called it AIM, and it was aiming to help them promote. That was the focus behind that program. Then coach the coach, right? Now there's text coachings that I've implemented the past year and a half, and um, there's different ways you can do it. But the bottom line of, of leadership is helping people past certified. If you looked right now at yourself as a leader, say you're a star or a superstar or a director, I would love to know how many frontline lead stars, superstars, and director you have under you frontline. Because the focus has to be as a leader in building yous, in building people to get where you're at. And not only that, y'all know what my other goal has always been with you guys? To help you do it better and quicker. And I'll die on that hill too. Because that's always been my goal, is to help you guys evolve and do it quicker and do it better and do it really on your time. Do it your way. Okay. And so I really started focusing on coachings and on one on ones. Um, did not have enough boundaries though in that. And so we'll talk about that in a minute, but didn't have enough boundaries in that. But I was coaching a lot. A lot of people were promoting. Um, it was a really great time. This went on until really 2019. So from 2016 to 2019, for three solid years, my coaching went up. Leadership went way up. Okay, this leadership page cranked up. Leadership calls on this page cranked up. Everything really, really, really became very focused on how can I help them get to that next level and how can I help them learn how to sponsor and learn how to have consistent sales and earn annual sales and earn annual mentor. So it became like a passion of mine to help people have different lives because since he changed my life. So again, you as a leader have to, sh have to know the way and go the way before you show the way. And I knew how to teach them how to do it because I did it. And that's key. You have to be the one that's leading the way. You have to be the one to say, you know what? I am going to promote to director. And not only am I gonna to promote to director, but I'm bringing a director with me. I'm bringing leads with me and stars with me and superstars. I wish somebody told me that when I promoted a superstar director, but you know what everybody says? Get four directors. No, you need six directors when you promote to SSD because two of them are gonna be gone in a year. You need four when you promote to star director or at least three and one's on the way. Constant building of leaders is critical if you want to build wealth, wealth, financial freedom. I'm not going to sugarcoat this because the income disclosure will be on it. If you want to build financial freedom, you have got to get up and lead. Quit showing up to your leader's leadership calls and do your own. Build that community. Build it behind closed doors, good Lord. Help them, text them, show them the way without dragging them. Identify the right people to work with. When I identify who I'm gonna work with, and I've taken a long break on coaching calls, so when I go back to them next month, I'm gonna be very intentional. And guess what? It always starts with my front line. I'm not gonna coach somebody 10 down from me before my own front line. That doesn't even make sense. So you also have to look at when you're identifying who you're gonna work with, you need to first look at your front line. And if you don't have front line to work with, the second thing I want you to look at is your sponsoring. Because if you have no one to work with, I wanna know what your sponsoring's been the past six months. That's why consistent sponsoring is key as a leader. You have no idea where that person is gonna be. You're one person away from changing your entire business. Okay, and so constant building of leaders at each level is critical. When you're a star director, you're focused on building multiple directors and you're building a star director under you. When you're an SSD, you're continuing to not just build directors now, but now you're building second and thirds. Do y'all understand? Do y'all know the comp plan? The comp plan is key. You have to understand the compensation plan. So you can explain it to someone who wants to get to lead. So you can explain it to someone who wants to get to star and et cetera. So being competent is important. 
Um, and then after, after I promoted to SSD and was doing these coaching calls, um, I ended up retiring. So I left um, in 2018. I left nursing. I retired. Done. Um, I got pregnant with my daughter that next year in 2019. And then the rest is history because right when she was born, 2020 happened. So that was fun for me. I had to pivot a lot. I um, had to figure out different ways I was going to work, being now a mom of two. And then my son was home for a little while when schools were closed down. And so I really had to make sure that I was continuing to sponsor as a lifestyle. I was continuing to keep the community up with leaders. So I would have events at my house, as some of you remember. So I was continuing that community. And I think that is very, very key, is establishing the community within your team and within your leaders that they don't want to leave. Some will leave regardless, but that doesn't matter. Let them leave. But you want to build a community to where they feel valued and seen and loved and they know that their leader is going to show up. Y'all know I'm going to show up. I'm going to be there. Period. Regardless of my feelings, regardless of what's going on at home, regardless of what's going on in my business, regardless of what's going on in my head, I'm going to be at World Tour. I'm going to be at SFR. It's a non-negotiable for me. I can't afford to not be there. That's my mentality. So here are a couple things that I do now that I wish that I knew then. Okay. Number one, this is key. And we're almost done. Number one, Boundaries in your business are critical, not optional. Can I tell you a secret? And this is going to hurt, but I'm going to be really honest. Your team doesn't care. You can think they care. You can think that they're your best friend. You can think that they're always going to be there for you. Listen to me. This is a business. Friendships are a bonus. They are not a necessity. Quit thinking you need a bunch of sensey friends in order to run a business. You need to be headstrong, disciplined, goal-oriented, and driven and consistent. That's how you build a business. I have let so many people in my past 10 years chew me up and spit me out and guess who was the only one that hurt? Because she didn't have boundaries. Me. Guess who emotionally invested in things that didn't matter? Me. If I can give you one tip, take emotions out of your business from the aspect of attaching success of you to the success of your team or what they think of you, etc. You need to, as a leader, Work your business consistently. Set goals for yourself consistently. Show up for your team and leaders consistently. And build leaders and rinse and repeat and take care of yourself. You do not owe your team or your leaders your life, your testimony, and your stories. They do not get that because you are their leader. Do you understand? And you can build trust without exposing all of those things. Because I want, I want y'all to understand this, they do not care. They do not care. And I wish somebody told me that. And my husband tells me that all the time now. And I'm like, no, they care. No, they don't, no, no, no. But guess what? When you separate from that and you're like, hey, this is a business, these are my business hours. I'm not gonna respond to somebody texting me with gossip or drama. I'm not going to get involved in that. I'm going to work my business. Then the conversation and the mental health is different. Then it's different. Quit investing into things that are not productive for your business or your life. Quit wanting it for people that don't want it for themselves. I see a lot of leaders invest in people that don't want it for themselves. It's only taking away from the 20 other people that you could be working with and building a business relationship with and giving them tools so they can be successful because you're focused on the three people that are star consultants on your team that complain every single day and haven't been paid a title in months and can't sell worth of nothing. That's reality. Focus on 
what is going good and what opportunities lie ahead. Have boundaries. Number two, I did this before, but I just want to reemphasize it. Focus on discipline and growing that muscle. Grow that muscle um, in all areas of activity, okay? So discipline in your health, discipline in your business, discipline in relationships, discipline in um, if you're a mother or a father. So being disciplined in the things that are going to create peace in your life, but also productivity in your life. Number three, you don't have to do it all, but you need to focus on what matters. Too many people are doing it all and they're not focusing on what matters. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Get off the Facebook pages and book parties. Have conversations, sponsor people, tell them that they can get the kit this month, right? The enhanced kit, have conversations, book home parties, have a different conversation with your follow-up. Stop having the same conversation over and over and over without challenging yourself. It changes when you change. The change isn't going to happen until you make the change. And so focusing on what matters is critical. Okay, samples to me are fluff. That's the last thing I'm going to do every time. For me, it's PRV sponsoring leadership, PRV sponsoring leadership, PRV sponsoring leadership. That's it. Okay, samples happen when I don't got a dang thing to do. And I've had all my conversations. Okay. Number four, evolving and change is a good thing and it's constant. I wish that I knew back then that so much would change now. I wish I understood that. But as a nurse in my career, things weren't really going to change. I was still going to be a, a registered nurse. I may change floors or get floated, but my job and what my responsibility was, was always going to be the same. Not that way in Cincy. Things are constantly changing and evolving, and that's what you want. Change is good. Every day the world changes. So get, get up in that and get uncomfortable. A lot of people don't like change. I understand that. But you have to embrace change and understand that the company is going to change. The products are going to change. The people are going to change. People, team, customers, leaders, etc. All of it's going to revolve, and it may not always come back. And I mean that in a way of sometimes in our business, we take the bad party that flopped or the team member that, that uh, didn't do anything. And a lot of people look at that and it discourages you and makes you not want to run. I want you to double that effort and get two more recruits for every recruit that doesn't do anything. That's the mentality that wealth is built on. That's the mentality. Um, my dad told me right when I really started this business, and it was like the greatest thing he ever said. Um, he told me, Chloe, don't focus on the business. Don't focus on like growing the business necessarily. He said, focus on the people and the people are going to change your business. I have always been focused on the people, always been focused on the one customer, always been focused on that new team member. Always been focused on my leaders trying to evolve. We're about to have a new leadership page, a new team page. Y'all know how much work that is for me? But guess what? But, not but. And when I do it, it's going to be so much easier for y'all to find resources and tools. And it's going to help you feel more like compatible and clear with your business. Because clarity was something I needed this year. And so evolving is key. All right. Also, you don't have to do or be everything for everyone. If you were in that um, circle of uh, chaos, you don't have to do it. You don't have to keep answering texts at 10 o'clock at night or Facebook DMs or all the things. It's very, very self-destructive. And also, you may be able to do it with a team of 50, maybe even 100, maybe 200. But once it gets on up there, you'll shut yourself in a dark room. And so understanding that you don't have to do and be everything for everybody, not only is it okay, but it's healthy. It's healthy. That's how healthy businesses are built. That's how people stay married. That's how people maintain sanity is by understanding that you don't have to make people's businesses work for them. They have to work. They're independent. But all of the tools and the resources and the community and all the things that you can offer or that you can have your director offer to your new team member and you showing up for them, you being their leader, not your director, that's key. 
Um, that's what's going to help you see success in your business. Um, help them find their way. This is something that I wish I knew then, but guess what? I did not, and I have grace for myself because I was just showing everybody what I was doing because it was working. But now what I'm focused on in leadership is showing them their way. I want to see what you want. If you're willing to work and you're not going to give me excuses because I can't do all that. If you're willing to work, if you're willing to book the parties, if you're willing to have sponsoring conversations, let's figure out your way to do it. And that is my mentality going into 2023 with my personal leadership is I want to find your way. I want to find your best way to party. I want to find your best way to have sponsoring conversations. I want to have your best way to lead and to coach your people to help them get to where you got. Um, so number seven, work to live and don't live to work. I lived to work for a long time. I gave a lot of people a lot. Don't do it. Work and be done with it. I promise you. Let me promise you something. Yes. If you have a full-time job and you want to build a six-figure income, you will be the last one going to bed. You will be the earliest one waking up. But you won't be doing that forever. It gets me real emotional because I remember that time. And not once did I complain, but man, I was tired. And y'all don't even know. Half y'all didn't even know me. And the ones who were consultants, not once did I ever complain. Not once did I get up and talk crap on Facebook about how crappy my life was or talk on my team page. I got up and I did it. I did events where I sold one bulb. All those moments though, all that discipline has gotten my life to this place. And um, it's, it's an incredible place to be, but you have to know when to cut it off. And I wish back then Somebody told that 23, 24 year old girl that it's okay. You don't have to keep answering everybody's texts. You don't have to get into that. You don't have to do that. Like, I wish somebody told me that. Like, do your work and then be done with it. Don't do all the extra. It's not worth it. Failure number eight. Failure is a part of the game plan in any business. You're going to fail. Get used to it. I have people not reply every day. I have people tell me they don't want to do this every day or a party flops. But that doesn't, we've got to grow a pair respectfully and understand that failure is normal for any business owner, okay? Once you embrace the failure so you can fly, it's a beautiful feeling. Failure challenges me to go, okay, I've tried this for 90 days. This didn't work. Let me look at a different way to do it. That's the mindset of people who build wealth right there. Let me look at a different way. Not you're going to your sponsor, not you're going to a Facebook page. You're literally like, okay, what's my new plan? What's my new plan? What am I going to do? What am I going to do in my business? Okay, let me go on YouTube. Let me look up some different ways people party. Let me, let me do a list of 100. Let me do a booking blitz. The flight is up to you. But you will be building the plane as you fly, as a leader, okay? And so, number nine, celebrate every win. I wish that I stopped trying to earn everything so hard without celebrating myself. Because I never used to celebrate myself. Earn a top trip, whatever, what's the next thing? Earn this, what's the next thing? Now... Like when I just earned that past incentive, I was so proud of myself. I didn't need my husband to take me out to dinner and he didn't. I didn't need a million people telling me how good I did. I stopped and celebrated myself. I don't need you guys or anybody else to validate my fulfillment of how hard I worked, but me. And that's also something else you need to understand as a leader. You're going to be alone a lot of times. You're going to have to learn how to celebrate yourself. You're going to have to learn to um, sit in it for a minute but then be gangster and get back to work but sit in those celebrations be proud of your sales when you have high sales be proud of your sponsoring be proud of that awesome new teamy training that you created be proud of that and number 10 remember why you started um when when your business gets hard and it will and i mean like hard hard i mean like crying on the floor, 
hard. When you get there, I want you to remember this. People only have control over what you give them control over. They do not care and that's okay. This is leadership school of hard knocks right here. You have to understand this. So you must remember why you started. Okay. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this encouraged you guys to go out there and do it your way and realize that there's no one way roadmap to get to a six figure income, but it takes simple, simple disciplines done every day and very, very well. I know that you guys can be successful in your business. You guys can do anything you put your mind to and your discipline to, but the only one that's going to be able to make the change that you'll see not now, but two years from now is you. So what are you going to do today that two years from now, your two year self is going to look back at this moment and be like, wow, we freaking did that. 